guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today I am filming with my friend Vika. Hello. Hello to Vika. <laughs> we are going to talk about her experience as an overseas Chinese living and working in China. Could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Hi, I'm Lena's friend. Um, my name is Vika. I was born in China, but then I moved to Canada when I was in grade three. Yeah, grade three. And then I did my elementary high school in Canada. But then I moved to the States for my bachelor degree. And now I came back to Beijing to do my master with Ling Ling. She's yeah. like, classmate. <laughs> International citizen. <laughs> there we go. And uh, where are you from in China? Oh, I'm from Guangzhou. Okay, and you move overseas with your family, right? Yeah, yeah, my entire family. Your entire family. So when you were in, when you were in Canada, did you learn any Chinese? Yeah, I actually did, because my mom was really scared that we we're gonna forget about Chinese. She's a tiger yeah. mom, but yeah. Oh, I, I <laughs> so do, but, but I love her. I love her. She's great. Yeah. yeah, she had she had a tutor for us, a Chinese tutor. So all of us basically have to go to that tutor every week to make sure we don't forget about Chinese. <laughs> no mercy. Yeah, no, not at all. So when you went to America afterwards, did you also speak Chinese during that time? Because your degree, everything was in English, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I still have a couple of Chinese friends. I'm still Chinese, even though I have a Canadian passport. That's the problem. She's I'm very Chinese. -y. Yeah, <laughs> I still have Chinese friends, so we still talk in Chinese with those Chinese people. Okay. And then you were about to finish in America, and you were like, "What am I supposed to do now? How did you choose like to come here?" Well, I always like to work behind the scene. So then, I was talking to my mom about this when I was in the States mm. and I thought that since I'm still Chinese and my mom didn't want me to live too far away this is a really really Chinese thing Tiger mom. I'm pretty yeah. sure everybody knows <laughs> Asian parents yeah and I actually don't have a problem I wanted to come back to Beijing because mm. Beijing is a big city like everybody works here there's a lot of opportunities and chances right so I was thinking like then I'll just come back but then I wasn't sure so sure about my Chinese I can speak Chinese but then the written part and she's other good. things. She's very good. Now she's just being modest. Chinese modest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I came back and did a master's degree to make sure that I can study a little bit at the same time and work a little bit. We're studying a master's degree in international journalism and communication. But that one is taught in English, so why did you choose an English instead of a Chinese taught degree? Because I never really thought about this. I wanted to take the Chinese one too, but then I was thinking, uh, I don't want to forget about English because I think a lot of people when you start speaking your other language, mm. you forget about this language. Yeah, I have a, people, I have a lot of friends. It's like this. very true. Yeah. So and there, if you study in a Chinese class, I'm pretty sure you don't get foreigners in your class, so I won't get For another sure. chance to speak English. So yeah. I was like, and eh, since I'm in China, I can be in the international class, and I can still meet a lot of Chinese people. So there we go. Ah. <laughs> That was very well thought through plan there. Okay. Your family now, where are they located? They're all in Guangzhou. Okay, so well, not, not, they not came back in... But like, some of them came back to China. Your mom is here. Right? Yeah, yeah, my mom and dad and sister are in China. Yeah, so they're back in China. So our parents are not abroad anymore. I think that's kind of like different from many overseas Chinese, like mm -hmm. people who, yeah. who grew up abroad, Chinese who grew up abroad, like many parents, they stay overseas. Right? Yeah, 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 a lot. So it's easy for you to go and visit them or like it makes more sense maybe as well. Yeah, and my mom's really happy that I'm closer <laughs> now. Mama happy, big happy. happy. Yeah. Everyone is happy. Yeah, I get to see them a lot more. Okay, that's really nice. So you came here last year, 2016, we started school. Were there any difficulties? Like had you so before before you came last year, did you travel back and forth between China a lot? Not much. Not much. Yeah, no. I think I only came back twice when I was doing my bachelor degrees. Wow. It's that's a long time, yeah. Because the flight is just too long. <laughs> I can't take it. Like I can't take it. So it's like no. Yeah, and school good. is the schedule is too packed, so right. I don't really have like the time to come back. Christmas break is only like one week. Yeah. It's not okay. Really so when you came back, were you like anxious? Were you thinking, oh my god, what if I don't fit in? Or like, did you have any feelings? Like I that? actually do. I never admit it, but then, because <laughs> even when I was in Canada or in the mm. States, I actually hang out with more foreigners mm. than Chinese. Okay. I That's surprising because I think Vika hangs out with a lot of Chinese here. Yeah, because now I'm back. Yeah. Yeah, but then when I was there, like, because all those Chinese people, they all speak Chinese mm -hmm. and then they don't really have 
much, I don't know, passions to learn English, mm. but then I wanted to like speak fluent English, yeah. but then I hang out with more foreigners. And yeah. I think my mom has been saying that mm -hmm. I'm foreigner inside, no. but then I like Chinese on the outside. <laughs> so I actually like to hang out with a lot of foreigners, so I'm actually more mm -hmm. comfortable. Mm. So when I came back, I was really nervous. <gasps> I don't know if you remember, but then the first two weeks of class, like I basically don't hang out with anyone. No, Whenever no. class starts, I go, class ends, I just go back like When I, I saw don't... you in the beginning, I was just like, damn, she <laughs> is cool. <laughs> I did not dare to say anything to no, you No, it's just like, I, I was nervous and I think I came late. And you then, did, yeah. Yeah, you I came late. Like, I don't remember like a week later. A week later? Yeah, I yeah. think a week later. So and she then, just like bumped into her class and we were yeah. just like, who is this person? And, and I'm Chinese and... Yeah, like is she Chinese Chinese, a foreign Chinese, a Western Chinese? What are we even allowed to say? I don't know. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's why the first two weeks I was struggling. And you guys already like, you guys already know each other. We knew each other. And then I was really nervous. I didn't know what to do. And I was like, oh my god. And like, I don't know any Chinese people, I'm like, oh my god, like, every time I walk back to the dorm, we used to live at West Campus, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, and then I was calling my mom, I was like, mom, I have no friends. I'm oh. lonely, I want to go home. Like, the first couple of weeks was pretty hard. Yeah. Pretty hard, yeah. Well, I can imagine because you're coming here alone and you're like, am I in the Chinese camp? Am yeah. I in the foreign camp? Where am I actually? Well, now everyone is just like friends and like randomly friends, but I can imagine in the beginning. I remember we have talked about this before, like you identify yourself as Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. Like even because of, even though you have a Canadian passport, mm -hmm. <clears throat> still very Chinese. So you have also done an internship here, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. still doing my internship. Oh, you're still doing it. Okay. So how was that in the beginning? Because for me, as a foreigner, I'm always nervous that if I start a job or an internship here, that the the laban or the boss, he will think in another way than me, and then we will, you know, have some complications there because of that. Like, have you thought about this as well, or like experienced anything? I didn't think that I would have a problem with the boss because for what I wanted to work at was behind the scene. I wanted mm. to come up with like TV shows like just for China. Mm. And I watch a lot of those shows so yeah. I feel like I have kind of have the same thinking. Really confident. Yeah. And, and then once <laughs> I started working with them, I realized my biggest problem is even though I speak... <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> even though I speak Chinese, but like the written part, I have to write a lot of reports. You uh, watch a show and then you write like a lot. She a lot writes a lot. I remember I've seen yeah, before. It's I have crazy. To write a lot. I just sit in front of the computer from eight in the morning till like six in the afternoon. I don't even know why. Like, why are you supposed to do that? Because they have to train me first to make sure that I can write perfectly. Like, I can actually write a perfect report. And then that was. So she has never too. done that before. Like never. try to imagine she has done all her studies in English, she comes to China, she does this internship, and she just has to write like this huge. Yeah. Like, I thought um, it was easy, but I was being yeah. too confident. Huh. Yeah, and then the boss wasn't really happy about what I wrote. Because maybe you have to have like fancy words, mm. you have to like specific yeah. detail and when it comes to written part, yeah, that was my biggest problem. Because I think my Chinese still wasn't that good. I actually think that's really brave because I, yeah, well, I have never been in that situation, obviously, but I think that's, that's really great of you to just be like, yeah, let's just do that. So life here now, we've been here for a year. Like, how do you feel now compared to when you just arrived? <laughs> life is still the same, but now I have a lot of friends. <laughs> I think that's the biggest difference. And then I found what I wanted to do in China. So it's pretty good right now. Yeah. Except for the paper we have to write at the end. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Our thesis. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not like it's not like you feel like you bump into these like cultural differences or like people saying, Oh, you look Chinese and then you're thinking, but how I think right now doesn't match how people think I look like or like I don't know. Sometimes but it, it depends sometimes because I think there are still a lot of Chinese people, they are really, really traditional. Those who <clears throat> never been a bore. Mm. I still have a little bit of conflict with my thinking. Yeah, because I was thinking you have been abroad for a long time. So even though you say yes, I'm Chinese, you still you still think differently, right? Than yeah, the little, traditional people. I think I'm half half. Mm. <laughs> Since my parents are really traditional, yeah. I can't get away get away with my traditional thinking. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why she your mom really affected you. Yeah. 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 So one last question before we finish this little conversation. I just want to know: Have you? Are you thinking about staying here, or what are your plans after we graduate next year? What are your plans after graduation? 
Um, I was actually talking to my mom this summer. I was struggling with to work as a course. My mom wanted me to stay in Guangzhou, the closest, <laughs> the better. But then so I really don't want to give up my job at Beijing. Mm. I think it's a great opportunity. I can really do Beijing, what I want to. Yeah. So I, I told my mom, I, we have this long conversation every night, I think. <laughs> But it's great, and she 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 supports me a lot. Yeah. So she's fine with it. And Beijing is still closer than states. Mm -hmm. so of course. I'm gonna stay yeah. in Beijing. Cause you do still have a brother abroad, right? Two yeah, brothers. yeah, yeah, yeah. Two brothers. Two one brothers. in Toronto, one in England. Yeah. Four children, guys. Family, <laughs> family, four children. Traditional. I, I still don't understand how that works, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so you're definitely not thinking about like leaving again. It's not like you're thinking, oh my god, I miss Canada or like. Well, I I do, but maybe just for fun, like to travel. But okay. I'm gonna stay in China. Well, it's, it's really it's really interesting because when I think about it, it's like. You've been so many years, like you've been most of your life in Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah. But like your mom literally just brought China over and then, yeah. <laughs> and then now you're back and you're yeah. like, yeah, I'm just gonna stay here. Canada was just like kind of the station I stayed at to change my train and then now I'm moving on. <laughs> well, they are all great experience, so. Yeah, of course. She is definitely an international citizen, so <laughs> I just wanna thank you very much for no, joining welcome. this little interview. If you have any questions for Vika, then please uh, leave a comment below and thank you for watching our little chit chat here. Hope you're having a great day, evening, wherever you are. Well, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Ling Ling and Vika, see ya and see ya. Bye! Bye. <laughs>